mix and match COVID vaccines has been a discussion topic very recently. The reason being that we have several vaccines that have been approved in recent weeks or months, including some RNA vaccines, viral vector vaccines, and the details are given in the slide that is shown. Some need two doses, some need one dose. The problem is there's a critical shortage of vaccines. There have been severe supply chain issues and there is precedence where vaccines that have been tested for malaria and HIV have used a mix and match procedure in the past. So what are we trying to do? We are trying to train a person's immune system to respond so that an immune response is there to the virus. And how we train it is like going for studying for an exam. You can study for the exam in different ways. You can go for classes. You can go on the internet. You can go for read a book, but ultimately you want to get the knowledge. So health experts generally agree that mixing and matching of vaccines should be fine. If this is the case, it would increase the flexibility and resilience of immunization programs, and we will be able to roll out vaccines most quickly. But the important question is, is it good or better in terms of an immune response? And would we get a broader and long lasting immunity when we mix and match vaccines? So let us see what is known about this area. Now in the Sputnik V vaccine, we know that two different viral vectors are used, adenovirus 26 and adenovirus 5. So inherent there, you have mixing of two different vectors, is the first dose and the second dose. The Center of Disease Control in the UK say, in the US say, Vaccines should not be mixed unless there are exceptional situations like short, a shortage of vaccines, which is seen in several parts of Asia and Africa. The Center of Disease Control and Prevention in China, its chairman, the president, George Gao, has suggested that there should be vac mixing, should be considered so as to boost vaccine effectiveness. What about Germany and France? We know that initially, the AstraZeneca vaccine was given to those over the age of 55 or 60. Subsequently, it was changed and now the AstraZeneca vaccine is given. Initially, it was, it, initially it was not given to those over 60, but now it is given to those over 60. And inherently in that decision, there's a mixing of vaccine doses with AstraZeneca vaccine given first and another vaccine being given secondly to those who are under the age of 60. What about the UK government position? If va vaccine mixing is allowed, if there's shortage of required vaccine at the site, and if we do not know which vaccine has been received initially, so are there trials to look at this question? Yes, Ox University of Oxford is conducting a 13-month trial in those over the age of 50 years, and the target is 1,050 volunteers, and at present, greater than 800 what have been recruited. So what are they doing? They are giving the AstraZeneca vaccine or the Pfizer vaccine as a first dose, and then a reverse as a boost dose, that is a second dose. And this is given eight or 12 weeks apart. And it has been extended to test the Moderna and the Novavax vaccine too. Initial results should be coming next month. And it has been expanded with the expanded results to come in June or July. At present, there are no safety signals in mixing and matching in this trial. The immune response is being checked at the present moment and this has been rolled out across nine sites in England. Also in Russia, there is a trial that has been planned or has been carried out with the AstraZeneca vaccine being given first 
and the Sputnik vaccine being given second. And we are awaiting these results, but we do not have much information at the present time with regards to the outcome of this trial. Have there been animal studies? Yes, the Chinese vaccine have been combined. The AstraZeneca and Pfizer vaccine has been combined in animal studies and has been found to be safe, effective, and immunogenic. The next question is, we may need a third dose because of the variants that are coming up and we may need a booster. We may need to boost the antibody response. So if we have the possibility of mixing vaccines, it will be more convenient. Already there is a big shortage of vaccines. And if we try to give the same vaccine, it could run into problems. And again, certain vaccines may be more effective against variants. For example, a mRNA vaccine may be better against a certain variant, and the person may have received a viral vector vaccine. So therefore, combining or mixing vaccines may be something to be considered. We have to remember at the present time, we do not have a correlate of immune protection. We don't have an antibody level or a T cell level, which you can say the person is protected. And that is important when trying to assess vaccine combinations or mixing and matching. So in summary, there, is a, there are a number of vaccines that have been approved so far. The question that has been studied at the pre present moment is can we combine and mix vaccines? The trial is ongoing. The present immunological position, especially in some of the London hospitals, is that one could mix and match vaccines, but we are awaiting these study results. Thank you.